Hey guys, Miguel in here. Today we have a really interesting topic about the new hack of the Cayman Islands. We consider it like this is like the second part of the Panama Papers back in 2016. So guys, you should better check out this video. And remember, we have a lot of content in our YouTube channel, so I also invite you to go and check the videos. Let's get started. Guys, one more time, let's talk about a massive hack strike, this time of Sure Cayman National Bank. Well, in this occasion, a hackers leaked two terabytes of data from the Cayman National Bank, stolen by famous Phineas Fisher. Well, as you know, the Cayman Islands are a fiscal paradise that attracts money of questionable origin from all over the world. And, well, for this reason, a new data leak is scaring the global finance industry. And well, with this data breach, the Cayman National Bank joins the list of many other banks targeted by hackers recently. And well, this information was first published by the Transparency Collective Distributed Denial of Secrets Group, which is DDoS, whom, as you know, it's like the Asian model of the WikiLeaks website. And well, all this information was first published by the Transparency Collective Distributed Denial of Secrets Group, DDoS, whom, as you know, it's like the Asian model of the WikiLeaks website. And well, in this website, they always publish information related uh, to Russia and its friends. And well, these guys, they published some materials of the leaked documents on their Twitter account on Saturday. As you can see on your screen in these pictures, we can identify many documents exposing evidence of money laundering by Russian oligarchs and other important people worldwide, similar to what we saw back in the Panama Papers in 2016. Of course, the bank already confirmed the leak of information. And they ensured that till now, no money losses have been reported. But I mean, that's something that for sure, as we all know that the aim of this attack was to acquire information and to expose the fraudulent activities around this. So from this massive leak, the details of more than 1,400 client accounts was released. So from this massive leak, the details of more than 1,400 clients account was released, including 780 from Isle of Man, 272 from Cyprus, 153 from the United Kingdom, 107 from the Cayman Islands, 51 from the British Virgin Islands, 12 from Seychelles, 11 from the United States, 7 from Belize, 7 from Ireland, and some others from Gibraltar, Jersey, Barbados, Malta, and many other countries. And what a coincidence, all these countries are fiscal paradises. And you know, these are all money paradises, and this clearly sounds like money laundering. And why we're mentioning this word? Well, because of the huge amount of information they leaked, and well, because of this massive leak, new information is added to the famous case of the Panama Papers. Remember, this is the name given to a leak of confidential documents of the Panamian law firm Monseca back in April 2016. You know, that was considered the largest data leak ever. The entire files of 2.6 terabytes included more than 11.5 million documents related to activities made by offshore shell companies around the world, used by the most powerful people, including 72 current and former heads of the state. So guys, if you want to know more about this Panama Papers case, let me tell you that we actually made a video of it a couple weeks ago, and, well, it also has a review of the new Netflix movie, The Landromat, that actually talks about this case. So we're going to leave you the link up here in the description and down below. And well, the next question is, who was able to hack these banks and leak all this information? The answer is none other than Phineas Fisher. This is the nickname of a hacker that he didn't care about confessing his actions. And actually, he also published a document named from the mountains of the cyber southeast where the activist or better known as hack activist is explaining why he hacked the banks and what he thinks about the current world order and how people are increasing their wealth through money laundering those kind of things well in this document Phineas Fisher explained in this manifesto details of how he hit a secretive banking network at the Cayman National Bank used by global super wealthy people. 
He also explained his motivation for hacking financial services companies, which included political analysis of how financial institutions serve as key enforcers for the global class structure. And well, as you can see on the screen, uh, the hacker mentioned that he robbed the bank and gave the money away, but it wasn't he alone, he did it thanks to the free software movement, the offensive PowerShell community, the Metasploit project, and many other things that made this hack possible. Phineas Fisher also makes reference on many social and political issues, and that's why this hacker is considered as a hack activist since he always published the information of big companies. And um, among many other things, the hacker also mentioned that, well, he saw injustice in the world, that he felt love for human beings, and, well, he used the tools he know, and that's why he made this hack. Because he actually has a desire for a world where everyone can realize their potential and live a full life. Amazing and beautiful words over here about this hacker. And also, he included information of the security tools he used, such as Metasploit, GitHub, and observations about previous major bank hacks, among others. Of course, Phineas Fisher's identity is yet unknown, but his hacks have impacted companies around the world. For instance, he's the same hacker who hacked Gamma Group and the Italian company hacking team in 2015. Over there, he released over 400 gigabytes of data. He also hacked the official website of the Bilderberg Group and the Catalan Police Union, and also leaked thousands of sensitive data online. Well, since we're talking about Phineas Fisher, let's talk really fast about his Hack the Beast Block hunting program. Oh, I don't know, it seems this hacker has a lot of money because he's offering to pay up to $100,000, like bounty in bitcoins, to other hackers that carry out Hack the Beast acts. And well, of course, this includes targeting big companies and leaking information to the public. And well, according to him, this is a form of fighting against governments and rich people. So guys, if you are interested in hacking big companies, you should check out the Hacktivist bug hunting program of Phineas Fisher. So there you go guys, please if you have any questions regarding this or if you want to make a collaboration or mention something about this case, please leave your comments. And also we want to say that we heard that Phineas Fisher is actually a girl. So we are not truly sure, in case that you are viewing this Phineas, please don't hack us. Well that was it guys, we truly recommend you to view the rest of our videos and of course to improve your security. Anyway, buddies, my name is Miguel Lopez. Thank you for your support till now, and I hope to see you again.